हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू आई होप यू ऑल आर वेल एंड प्रिपेयरिंग द एग्जामिनेशन स्पेस साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी राइट व्हाट वी नीड टू फोकस ऑन दैट नाउ द थिंग इज दैट व्हाट वी नीड टू गिव इंपॉर्टेंस टू दैट सो फर्स्ट थिंग व्हाट कम्स हियर दैट इज इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंट सैटेलाइट्स right important satellites uh, of uh, isro which indian space research organization right recent time whatever the important satellites are there and what are their applications right so uh, satellites which have been launched plus the application whether it is a communication satellite or space science and technology based satellites or remote sensing satellites earth observation remote sensing satellites so we have to see those kind of latest satellites there right second area which comes here that is a launch vehicle rockets and launch vehicle technologies there and in the launch vehicles whichever has made headlines manned unmanned reusable launch vehicle or even a uh, um, normal conventional rockets So we have to focus on that. Those technologies which are linked with that. Plus, we have to also see here our uh, important space missions. All these kind of important space missions, which are uh, they are from the part of ISRO and also some global development. We have to focus from there, right? So that is again. Uh, uh, first, we will start from ISRO. We we'll see all those development from ISRO. and we we'll see the satellite launch vehicle all the technological aspect where are the applications part comes there what are the important missions of uh, space missions we'll first focus on that once we are done with it then we will go into the topic of a uh, uh, global aspect on that so let us start with that there are many things which are interconnected with the uh, indian space program so we will be review review all those areas there and they can be important for the coming examination there all right so let us begin with that So let us start with the ISRO first. Then we'll go one by one. So uh, I will be using now PowerPoint presentation, and also I will be mixing with on the whiteboard. So we'll have both the aspect of uh, discussion in the classroom. All right. So let us start with that. So what you can see here is that um, from ISRO, right? Uh, Genesis, you know that ISRO started its uh, uh, beginning from 1969. do our space program started way earlier in 60 but uh, 69 formally indian space research organization was set up and in 1972 department of space came into existence where isro works there and you all know that two departments come under pmo one is department of space and another is department of atomic energy so now from that perspective uh, you all know that dr vikram ambalal sarabhai founding father of indian space program right and uh, 2019 is a very landmark year for isro because the uh, isro completed 100 years of existence at the same time isro also celebrated 100th birth anniversary of dr vikram sarabhai right recently you know that chandrayaan 2 uh, lander was named vikram which carried the pragyan rover so that's in honor of dr vikram sarabhai the lander of the chandrayaan 2 india second lunar mission was named as vikram right uh, dr vikram sarabhai not only space science and technology he also played very important role in india's atomic energy program after serving as first chairman of I, uh, department of space he joined the department of atomic energy he is also known for his outstanding contribution in the field of uh, social work and also in terms of laying foundation of the premier b school of india that is i am amdavad right so this is all you are aware of that eminent scientist contribution now this is the place where our space program starts what you see right now this is the uh, mary magdalene church which is located in thumba thumba stands for Uh, as very small village 
is a very small coastal village on the coast of uh, arabian sea in the capital city of uh, kerala that is a tirunanthapuram so in tirunanthapuram right there capital city of uh, kerala just 12 15 kilometers away from the main city there is a coastal village called thumba and there we have a research center called terls thumba equatorial rocket launch station our rocket science rocket technology started from this place and now this museum what you see right now is a museum housed inside the church so it is called makkah of uh, rocket science in india our rocket science program started from here in a small cow shed and then it went into full fledged uh, uh, you know development what we today are proud of pslv gslv right so the, the genesis goes from this particular small location in thumba near to this uh, uh, place there is also one uh, another important center of isro that is a vssc vikram sarabhai space center which develop all the advanced technology right now if you see here organization structure this is what isro stands today right our uh, isro comes in a department space that comes under supervision of prime minister there is a very important aspect space commission what you see the space commission is a dedicated body which looks into a uh, decision making of what all space programs india must have and that is decided by space commission is headed by chairman of isro then there is a um, principal secretary of uh, prime minister cabinet secretary national security advisor uh, foreign secretary expenditure secretary right to all these people they are the part of space commission then various labs are there uh, upsc will not ask you names of the labs but just uh, i am discussing right now prl physical research lab then uh, we have a space application center is a very very important center then we have vssc vikram sarabha space center another very important center lpsc liquid propulsion system center that is in mahendragiri where our pslv liquid engine vikas engine was developed our indigenous cryogenic engine was developed there right then you all know that satish thavan space center sri harikota that is the pulikat lake part of andhra pradesh that is where we do the launching of our space program then we have uh, no, uh, this one national remote sensing center hyderabad has got that so whatever you see here this is the total uh, you know coverage of different labs and centers throughout the country right so over the last uh, more than 50 years we expanded and we have built up all the infrastructure required for space science and technology present chairman you are aware dr k sivan right he comes in the news there he is right now the chairman of uh, isro and also secretary to department of space before him there were um, eight chairman right which i can go sequentially there you can see we will start from bottom right hand side dr vikram ambalal sarabhai right then comes here dr mg k menon then professor satish dhawan then udupi ramachandran rao then we we'll go again to the uh, left hand side top up, top up uh, dr k kasturi rangan you know that recently he was in the news with respect to national education policy then g madhavan nayar during his time chandrayaan 1 mission was there then, then dr radha krishnan right k radha krishnan then come into dr as kiran kumar the last photograph what you see here so these are the former chairman of uh, isr space commission that is the secretary of department of space that is the chairman of isro then principal secretary to pm national security advisor to pm cabinet secretary foreign secretary expenditure secretary finance secretary vikram sarabhai distinguished professor national research professor and there is a secretary joint secretary from department of space Th these are the members which make the space commission right which take all decision with respect to indian space program now very very important one here vrc village resource center what you see right now it is a dedicated center uh, set up by isro and this could be asked in the exam it can be asked in the exam and village resource center uh, which has been one window center set up in the village area which can provide the common man in the villages 
स्पेस बेस्ड सर्विसेस लेट्स ए प्लानिंग फॉर पंचायत राइट पंचायत प्लानिंग देर ड्रिंकिंग वाटर फाइंडिंग आउट देर वेदर वार्निंग और मेट्रोलॉजिकल सर्विसेस टेली मेडिसिन टेली एजुकेशन राइट ट्रेनिंग पर्पज देर इन टर्म्स ऑफ वाटर शेड डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑल स्पेस बेस्ड सर्विसेज विच कैन बी डिलीवर्ड विद द हेल्प ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन सैटेलाइट्स लाइक वी हैव जी सैट सैटेलाइट्स एंड एट द सेम टाइम विद द रिमोट सेंसिंग सैटेलाइट काटो सैट रिसोर्स सैट ओशन सैट दैट कैन बी डन थ्रू वी आर सी राइट विलेज रिसोर्स सेंटर सो नाउ वॉट आई डू हियर जस्ट क्यूकली आई गिव यू अ ब्रीफ स्नैप शॉट ऑफ वॉट आर सैटेलाइट्स and the applications what isro has developed this is very very important to keep in the mind then only you will be able to connect with the current aspect current aspect again that becomes very important because uh, you will be able to connect there if you understand certain basic things that's what i have started from very uh, basic level and then i am building upon advanced areas right so now let's see here what i'm now coming here that is a uh, in context of uh, part of the what are the important satellite platform isro has built and then we will see from the current aspect so if you see from isro satellite systems right satellite systems here so we can uh, break into three broad uh, categories or i can say here four broad categories i'll divide into four broad categories and within this four broad categories we will also connect the current aspects from that now first broad category is the communication communication based satellites right communication based satellites and you all know that we have a very important system called insat indian satellite system right so what we also call as a now the satellite which are launched we call it gsat now this program was started here this program was started in 1983 not very important for upsc exam to remember the year but just for your general awareness it was started in 1983 that first insat launch right commercial launch now what is very important application part is a multi purpose uh, satellite system So we must know where we are using the GSAT. Now all the heavy you know, uh, GSATs are now being launched. So the application is one. One is what telecommunication, wireless communication, mobile communication, business communication, all this telecommunication aspect, right? Then what comes here? Next, what comes here is the distance learning, right? What I said, tele education. That, uh, for example, live classes. right live classes uh, um distance learning there now vsat technology right we can have a continuing education program right very small aperture terminal and through that we can have live classes 24 into 7 we can run the classes there and that can happen in the real time that can be that through satellite initially isro built edusat but now we are using gsat system to provide the education purpose now to meet the healthcare demand telemedicine providing healthcare services to far away areas right border areas right north east india or rajasthan gujarat where uh, such a far flung areas where people cannot access uh, proper health healthcare uh, services that can be supplemented with the help of technology space technology and with the medium of the gsat satellite just like video conferencing as a doctor can talk to the patient the paramedic there all in the computer the software can have all the report of the patient right critical care system can be there i uh, support to the patient in the icus can be given there right and now it has become very important the covid time why it has become very important covid time because you know that covid virus is so dangerous so contagious if you come in contact with the virus you know virus multiplies very very fast now let's say any person which has got symptoms of the covid 19 and today you know the what is happening with the hospitals and the you know healthcare system in the country so what can be their initial phase 
the person who has got the symptoms of the corona virus need not have to rush to the hospital today it can be done through laptop through computers in the laptop you can consult doctor you can have online consultancy online consult with the doctors who can advise you what to do at that point of time what medicines have to be taken what precautions have to be taken the doctor will consult that so telemedicine kind of unit or system can really help provide that kind of healthcare support system and today we are running this kind of a live telemedicine system there with the help of gsat satellites right then comes here apart from that metrology metrological services right metrological services for example um agro metrological data or information which can be sent to the mobile phone of farmers where the farmers uh, can get all the information that can be done through satellite right that can be done with the medium of satellite right what is the weather of uh, today how much will be rainfall how much will be the temperature right in summer winter rainfall right at the same time it can also give you the warning also flood drought again that can be disseminated by the help of communication satellite impending cyclone let's say cyclone which is coming to the bay of bengal that is a part of odisha or andhra pradesh or the arabian sea towards the gujarat side so again the warning can be given to the coastal community with the help of the communication satellites like today we are using gsat right that is the now you all know that direct to home services that is a tv broadcasting tv and radio broadcasting right that can be done through communication satellite and you know that direct to home dth now we have all got the dth at home over like isko laga liya to live jhinga lala tata sky khushiyon ko chatri video kon dth right dish karo wish karo that is a dish tv so that is all dts direct to home services gsat technology being gsat uh, satellite being used for tv and radio broadcast right disaster management support system i have mentioned that cyclone or all those kind of uh, then again it can give the warning and uh, that kind of support let us search and rescue operation for example search and rescue operation right we again require dedicated uh, communication network right and that can be done through gsat all right next category what we can bring here that is a remote sensing right remote sensing satellites we have resource side kato side ocean side we have developed number of them so remote sensing satellite or what is called as a earth observation getting all data on the earth right land water forest agriculture so remote sensing comes into that we have iris system here isro has developed indian remote sensing system which was started in 1988 when it was started 1988 now what are the applications here one is the survey management of natural resources so here in terms of survey and management of natural resources forest agriculture right uh, um then in terms of uh, water bodies all those survey can be done with the earth observation satellite they carry powerful resolution cameras and the instrument by which the mapping can be done we can survey all the resources right so that can be natural resources there then coming to here agriculture how much land is covered with uh, rice paddy wheat cultivation right if there is any kind of pest infestation or disease outbreak even we can get to know through the advanced remote sensing satellites so agriculture then forestry environment like wildlife uh, even uh, radio collar we can use radio collar on tiger or elephant we can use that pollution monitoring pollution of uh, greenhouse gases pollution of uh, garbage right dump yard and garbage and all this 
position of coastal areas again we can get all the data through that environmental monitoring can be done there right then coming to here cartography mapping which can be done for rural planning urban planning cartography thematic maps can be developed we have a very advanced carto sat series of satellite oceanography study of oceans ocean current ocean temperature ocean salinity linking with meteorological aspect we can have that right again we can have here disaster management also how disaster management come with remote sensing satellite it comes from the point of view of hazard map what map hazard map earthquake prone areas seismic zone flood affected areas where more risk of hazard of having getting flood or drought or famine landslide right earthquake cyclone we can prepare dedicated map with the help of remote sensing satellites right so that is comes here here we are talking in terms of communication where we can give warning early warning there but here we are talking about mapping remote sensing we are talking about mapping part right now coming third area navigation like gps and regional navigation and those area comes navigation part and we have two areas here which is very very important from isro one is the navic where already upsc has asked question navigation with indian constellation which is a irnss indian regional navigation satellite system basically we have launched nine satellite but actually the constellation made of seven satellites four in geosynchronous orbit and three in geostationary orbit it covers the entire indian landmass and 1500 km from border 1500 km distance from the border if it take area so if we take the area it can cover iran afghanistan pakistan china mongolia then uh, myanmar like laos cambodia vietnam uh, sri lanka so if we take area is more than 10000 square kilometer right already upsc has asked question on that and second area which comes here in navigation is the gagan gagan very very important gps aided geo augmented navigation satellite system right i have kept under navigation part what is the navigation it takes the gps signal from american gps and then it augment with the land in terms of air traffic control at the airports so airport authority of india and isro jointly developed gagan which is which provide signal in the space and this kind of system is called satellite based augmentation system where the pilot which fly the aircraft can get better signal right from the gps at the same time can communicate better with the ground staff in the airport which control the air traffic take off landing on the runway right that is where the gagan has come but gagan can be used for other applications we can use gagan for other applications recently ministry of earth sciences has developed gemini we will see in the classroom the gemini gagan enabled mariner's instrument for navigation services where fishermen can use gemini device handheld device to get the potential fishing zone pfz where more catch can be in the open sea in the sea and ocean in advance it can give weather data weather information then again warning for cyclone like during oki many of fishermen died so if this gemini was there their lives would have been saved because in the high sea by right, after 12 nautical miles in the high sea what happens in the high sea and ocean there no network there is no signal so they cannot get timely warning and can escape from there and that happened during the oki time so now gemini can provide them the signal that even they are 200 kilometers in the sea they can get through gemini any kind of early warning for the disaster or let's say a natural calamity cyclone high storm tides and even tsunami and they can save their lives potential catch of the fish in the ocean gemini is again based on the part of the current thing we'll cover that so that is a second third area there and fourth area comes here space and astronomy where we have built a satellite and spacecraft and i'll bring here first one 
you know that astronomical satellite of india astrosat what is first one india's first astronomical satellite astrosat right astrosat uh, india's first astronomical satellite 2015 was launched right for astronomical aspect then what comes here second second comes here uh, other space craft like lunar mission chandrayaan chandrayaan 1 chandrayaan 2 right now we are planning for chandrayaan 3 so 1 2 and 3 then uh, another one you know the mangalyaan mars orbiter mission right they are also satellite only they are orbiter they are satellite they also go around the mars planet mangalyaan or earth moon so that is also satellite then what comes here very important mission which are planning for study of sun aditya l1 lagrange point 1 aditya mission right aditya mission there so aditya mission lagrange point 1 between sun and the earth right 15 lakh kilometers away from the earth at lagrange point 1 in a halo orbit we are going to have aditya spacecraft right that is again the part of the our study of sun right so there are lot of things are there so this is all i have given a glimpse of whatever things are there you are getting a glimpse of that i am just uh, moving away from here so that you are able to uh, see and write what i have got here from examination perspective right you have to keep all this thing in mind because your uh, uh, upsc question can be anywhere right upsc question can be asked from any perspective it can be asked right you could get question from any of the perspective you could get question right is it clear here whatever i have written on the board right this entire aspect what you have to keep in mind right now we'll do uh, we'll go through the topic one by one and village resource center vrc provide all the space based uh, part from through, through gsat and the remote sensing satellite and we can use for governance right at the rural areas and that can be done through the such kind of a satellite system right so let us get back to the discussion there one by one we'll cover that so let us now come to the discussion and uh, you will be able to see and understand every aspect on that right so let us now go into that you all know first satellite of india aryabhata 1975 aryabhata was launched with the help of russia at that time we didn't have our launch vehicle we didn't have pslb or gslb we took the help of soviet union at that time ussr to launch our first satellite it was a experimental satellite that is a aryabhata and that was with the help of a rocket called intercosmos right and it was from kasput no, Kap kapustin yar there is a place from there april 1975 19 april 1975 we launched that right but again because of power failure that experiment was halted after 4 days in orbit there so at least the signals were sent by the spacecraft even after it was lost for 5 days we were able to get the signals and it again reentered to the earth's atmosphere on 11th february 1992 so it was on 619 kilometers apogee that is the farthest point from the earth and perigee of 563 kilometers that was the orbit and uh, it orbited 96.3 minutes there right at an angle of uh, the orbit was at an angle of 50.7 degree now let's look at few of the important one which has made headlines recently i'm now coming to the current aspect the first one is this one G gslb f11 you all know that india's uh, heaviest uh, kind of rocket gslb mark 3 and before that gslb mark 2 wherever you come across f right wherever you come across the f here that refers to gslb mark 2 and you can see the design here you have four liquid strap on motors on the first stage this is the this is the gslb mark 2 and gsat 7a was launched with the help of gslb f11 into geosynchro transfer orbit what is the transfer orbit initially we place into a transfer orbit we then take control and command of the satellite we then uh, fire the engine there some rocket and engine on the satellite and when then we maneuver maneuver the satellite in such a way that it goes to the desired orbit 
that is where the transfer orbit comes into that right. So, G sat 7 a satellite was launched G sat 7 a is a geostasis satellite like communication satellite it remains in the orbit uh, at 36000 kilometer around and uh, KU band KU band uh, right K band these are the ultra high ultra high frequency uh, spectrum which is used for providing uh, broadband uh, based services right uh, then uh, DTS services all these are provided there. So, 2250 kilogram this G set 7A was launched by ISRO and uh, that was in the news there. Now, coming to this one important for the exam India's heaviest satellite G set 11 was successfully launched right. Now, G set 11 is called Bahubali. See, our GSLE Mark 3 can launch maximum photon satellite. It can launch maximum 4000 kilogram class of satellite. But G set 11, this satellite built by ISRO, weighs more than 5500 kilogram. So, we took the help of France. When we are not prepared with our GSLV rocket for heavier communication satellite or our communication satellite is so heavy that is more than 4000 kilogram, then we take help of France where it launched from Kuro, Kuro French Guiana that is an island in uh, Atlantic Ocean that is in the South America near to equator. So, there we take, take the help of France to do the launch. So, we did that one and uh, application part is very very important where G set 11 will be used. So, what is very important G set 11 will is providing high data rate connectivity for users over India right using spot beam some fixed area which can give this precise information there provides broadband connectivity to Gram Sabha, Gram Panchayat under Bharat Net project very very important. Government of India under Digital India program has already laid optical fibers, underground optical fibers and connected Gram Sabha with the WLAN and Wi-Fi hotspot and everything. Now, the broadband connectivity will be supported through this uh, G set 11 satellite that is where the Bharat Net project comes 2,50,000 Gram Sabhas which are getting digitalized under Digital India program. And G set 11 also supports high data application for enterprise network and consumer broadband applications. Right. So, this is very, very important for coming exam. So, I am covering all those latest satellites which have made headlines. Mark 3 D1, GSLV Mark 3 D1. You can see very clearly how GSLV Mark 3 looks like. It has got two heavy boosters. You can see on the sidewise two solid heavy boosters with a core liquid engine then followed by core liquid engine and then we have upper third stage cryogenic engine indigenous cryogenic engine right there is the upper stage there and this is what you can see GSLV MK3 which can uh, launch uh, 4000 kilogram satellite we, you, we launched the GSAT 19 that was a GSLV Mark 3 D1 right 170 kilometer perigee that orbit was 35975 kilometers approximately 36000 kilometers right to this we launched this uh, satellite of weighing 3136 then another one Mark 3 uh, this was that is a D2 GSLV Mark 3 D2 we launched GSAT 29 you can see here G set 29 and G set 29 is multi beam multi band uh, communication satellite and it was launched into the elliptical geosynchronous transfer orbit uh, with 190 kilometers uh, perigee and 35,975 kilometer apogee with an inclination of 21.5 degree. Now, G set 29 uh, right uh, then was brought to the geostationary orbit into equatorial plane right and uh, again is for communication satellite right we have already done that the, the weight of the satellite is uh, 3423 kilogram 
right and we use gslb mark 3 d2 for the mission right then come into here gsat 30 launch gsat 30 launch that was uh, with the help of france we took the help of france you can see the map kuro french guiana and um, that was launched on uh, 17 january 2020 right and uh, we use a uh, ariel 5 va 251 rocket of france for launching this satellite now gsat 30 is providing the vsat network that is tele education you can say it replaced the edusat education satellite edusat is replaced and here is vsat network television uplinking like dth and all this teleport services digital satellite news gathering dsng dth television services cellular uh, backhaul connectivity and such applications like india is now rolling out 5g so again we require the spectrum and all the spot so gsat 30 will provide that and it provides c band uh, that is a ultra high frequency range there and can provide the program over india gulf countries large number of asian countries and australia right and the uh, weight of the satellite was 357 3357 3, kg right so geostationary orbit for 15 years then gsat 31 again we took the help of france from french guiana we launched this and gsat 31 is again communication satellite and uh, uh, we launched it with the help of france now the 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 size of the satellite is 2535 kg that means we were not prepared with our gslb program so gslb uh, rocket there then we took the help of france there now what are the applications again the same applications same as the gsat 30 supporting vsat network tele education and live classes and all tv uplink then uh, dth uh, there television services cellular backhaul and all this same as gsat 30 right then you can uh, very recently it shows PSLV C50, where communication satellite CMS01 satellite was successfully launched. And here we use PSLV rocket. We used the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV. And that is 42nd communication satellite of India. And CMS01 has replaced GSAT 12, right, which was uh, launched in 2011. So now it has been GSAT 12 has been replaced by CMS 01. So again, it will provide all those frequency spectrum and information for the mobile satellite system, right? Uh, all those kind of fixed satellite system, mobile satellite system, right? And we also cover not only Indian landmass but also Andaman Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep. So for a mission life of seven years, it has been successfully launched. We took the help of PSLV C50. It was a 52nd uh, flight of PSLV and 22nd flight of XL version, extra large version. Right? What you see from the image here that PSLV has six you know, strap-on motors. You can see tiny rocket which is strapped on the first stage of the uh, rocket there. And you know that PSLV is a four-stage rocket. First stage is solid. Second, what you see red in color that is liquid. Then again the white one solid. And again, the last fourth one, red one is the liquid. So, solid, liquid, solid, liquid. And above is the box where we keep satellites. And uh, this all step on motors, you can see the rockets, six step on motors, solid fuel based, are attached to the first stage. Now, we will go to remote sensing satellites. Right. Uh, this is what you see the list of remote sensing satellites of India. Right. So, uh, IRS 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, T as the resource side 1, 2, 2A, right? Then we have IRS P3, Ocean Side 2, Ocean Side 3, Kalpana, India's first meteorological satellite, Kalpana, named after Kalpana Chavala. Then Inside 3A, then Kato Side 1, 2, 2A, then Kato Side 2B, then Kato Side 3, serial so satellites are now being launched. Inside 3D, Inside 3D R, these are meteorological satellites. Mega Tropics, India and France. Together, mega topics by like 2011 RISAT radar imaging satellite, RISAT 1, then RISAT 2, and recently RISAT 2BR1 for helping radar defense based services application in the military area and uh, keeping eye over the border areas. So, RISAT is there, Saral, India and France. 
satellite for of Argos and Altica. India and France for study of ocean, depth of the ocean, marine resources. That is several satellite has been developed. Now what you can see, this is the way remote sensing satellite work. The remote sensing satellite which is connected to the you know dish antenna or the antenna what you see there. So it takes the signal, it receives the signal, then uh, send the data back to the ground station through the part of the antenna and antenna give the data to the server and from server it goes to the part of the computers where all the data regarding agriculture, forest, all those remote sensing data are analyzed in the computer with the help of software. Right? This is what you can see in the diagram there. Now, very very important one which I would like to bring here. That is a uh, ISRO um, successfully launched the research sat 2A. Now, Earth observation satellites are used in polar orbit. We use in where polar orbit, sun synchronous polar orbit, mm -hmm. dawn to dusk, morning to evening, or north to south uh, orbit. The resource resource sat 2A was launched. Very highly advanced for resource uh, measurement, right? The resource data that has been launched there. What you see in the photograph right now. So, it was launched in 2015-16, right. So, we have such kind of satellites. Then about study of you know, um, oceans, clouds, meteorological aspect, we are using remote sensing satellites. And you can see here the diagram here, all the cloud cover over India. So, real time satellite images are mapped and assessed at the National Remote Sensing Center, NRSC that local in Hyderabad and information about inundation, flooding is shared with state and central government. Five satellites are monitoring the weather and flood situation in Kerala. Ocean side 2, resource side 2, Kato side 2 and 2A and inside 3DR. You know that uh, Kerala flood, right? At that time, these five satellites were used for monitoring the flood situation, inundation in the state of Kerala. Then you can see here, um, BOYS, B U O Y S. BOYS are the some kind of uh, you know instrument carrying device which float on the ocean surface. We put on the surface of the ocean and it floats there. So they can track waves and uh, wind in the Arabian Sea. Six wave rider BOYS were maintained by INCOIS. It's a very very important scientific organization under uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences. It's called Indian National Center for ocean information services. So, their boys were put up to depth of 25 meters. Seven data boys were maintained by NIOT, National Institute of Ocean Technology at a depth of around 3000 meters and again they are connected with satellites, remote sensing satellites. Inquiries use the data from boys to measure wave direction, wave period, wave height and a three day forecast on high waves and wind alert can be provided and that is connected to the communication satellite and through that it can be related to the uh, different government agencies, agencies there, right. This is how the system works there. Then Cartosat, eye in the sky, right. Any kind of uh, cartography, mapping part. So, what is, what do you see in the photograph here? On June 23rd, 2017, 40th launch of PSLV. Polar satellite launch vehicle of India. In one single uh, rocket, right, PSLV, 31 satellites were launched. And uh, in that, uh, the heavier one was Katosat 2. India created Guinness Book of World Record by launching maximum number of satellites using the rocket. 31 satellites were there. In that, uh, Katosat 2, that was uh, the heavier one there. Whereas the other were 30 nano satellites were there. 30 nano satellites were the nano satellites are very very small satellite, one kilogram to five kilogram size satellite that is called nano satellite. So total weight was 955 kg. Now it was launched there, and uh, ISRO created world world record by launching maximum number of satellite, which was earlier uh, held by Russia. So we broken that uh, record and. 31 satellites were launched, right. In that uh, 30 co passenger nano satellite, there was a student satellite from Tamil Nadu, the university called Nurul Islam. Nurul Islam University from Tamil Nadu, 
that there was 15 kg satellite which was made by this university by the students this is a student satellite and that is for crop monitoring and disaster management where it can provide data crop monitoring and disaster management and 29 small satellite from 14 countries were there Austria Belgium Chile then Czech Republic Finland France Germany Italy Japan Latvia Lithuania 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 Slovakia UK and USA these were the foreign satellite 29 foreign satellites were there and you know that today we are earning revenue by launching the foreign satellites so it is again a landmark event which was there in on uh, in 2017 so isro 100 satellite launch psl c40 and 30 co passenger satellite was there kato sat 2 what we have discussed that uh, that was 100 satellite launch right 100 satellite launch and um, we have so world record was uh, uh, again we made a world record that was in january month uh, with the launch of 34 satellites right so this was the micro satellite nano satellite from six countries were put up there all these are data and facts which you have to remember that ocean site 3 and 3 a state of study of oceans right to provide continuity and enhance the ocean and atmospheric remote sensing services to the user community there right collect data from argos that is a sarl satellite which already there is another satellite from there to study about environment ocean studies right so these are again uh, very very important from scientific study of ocean ocean studies oceanography right that's where it comes into that then uh, very recently you know the pslb c51 amazonia one india's polar satellite launch vehicle pslb c51 launched this amazonia one satellite from brazil and from the name you can make it out amazon largest rainforest of world amazon there's a forest fire a lot of uh, things are happening with amazon forest and that is getting uh, you know lost so it is a earth observation satellite what is there earth observation satellite amazonia which will monitor the loss of the forest in amazon forest in uh, brazil right along with 18 co passenger satellite was launched on 18 february 2021 and is the uh, amazonia one is a optical earth observation satellite of national institute for space research inpp of brazil and the satellite would uh, give uh, provide remote sensing data to users for monitoring deforestation in the amazon region and analyze the diversified agriculture across the brazilian territory right and uh, this was the first dedicated commercial mission of uh, another new company which uh, isro has formed earlier was antrix that was the first commercial um, company of isro now another company has been set up called nsil new space india limited so amazonia one was the first commercial mission of new space india limited right an 18 co passenger satellite on board this rocket psl v c51 include four from in space right 14 from nsil out of four satellite from in space three were unity sat designed and built by joint development by jpr institute of technology sri perumbadur jit jit sat then gh raisoni college of engineering nagpur ghrc sat and sri shakti institute of engineering and technology coimbatore sri shakti sat they are all student satellites and one was satish dhawan sat sd sat in honor of professor satish dhawan so that is the from space kids india all these four are student satellite they are small satellites and the 14 satellite from nsil carried uh, where commercial satellite from india was one and 13 from usa right and pslc 51 is a 53rd flight of pslv and third flight of psl dl configuration very very important word dl configuration where we used only two stepper motors generally in psl we you will find six six in numbers stepper motors are there but the dl configuration we use only two stepper motors because all these satellites were small ones they were not heavier 
So, 78th launch vehicle mission of uh, from Satish Dhawan Space Center was there, and with that launch, total number of customer satellite of foreign countries, but by India now reaches to 342 satellites from 34 countries there. Now, Earth observation satellite there, very very important application comes Bhuvan. Bhuvan is the 2D and 3D geo portal of ISRO. It provides all the information with respect to um, map, like with respect to archaeology, watershed, forest, agriculture, environment. All these data can be given to users, to ministries, departments, government organization, just like Google Earth, it works there. So, it was launched in 2009 as a GIS, what is called Geographical Information System and uh, it provide all the data everything more than 6000 map services there the bhuvan school also there right so that is a very very important application uh, of the uh, isro through bhuvan platform now you can see use of space technology as force multiplier in other areas government had initiated 170 projects where space technology can be used for better result key areas are ganga cleaning mission mapping of the river bed and entire basin, crop forecasting, identifying potential fishery zone, west wa water, west land development, preparing master plan for cities, right? Then satellites to provide critical data on natural resources, right? Then uh, environment impact assessment report, forest, fi forest fire alert system, forest cover monitoring, right? GIS based infrastructure planning, geomorphological mapping for mining, Mapping of protected areas and coastal zone, toll information system for national highways, site management plan for tourist places under Archaeological Survey of India, right? Um, then geo tagging in 3D, visualization water bodies and groundwater prospects mapping, countryside DTH direct to home, to villages coverage, then expansion of private channel network served by additional satellite transponders, transmitters and receivers which are on the satellite, tele education, disease surveillance. All these are dedicated applications of remote sensing satellites, right? Very, very important for the examination. All right. Now I am coming to navigation satellite. India's navigation part of it. You know that uh, worldwide GPS, global position system. So America has 31 satellites, right? Uh, 10 years lifetime and uh, 5 meter precision. Then second comes uh, GLONASS. Of Russia, 24 satellites that 5 meter, 10 meter resolution. It's called Global Navigation Satellite System. Third is Galileo by the European Union. 40 satellites are there, and uh, uh, it can provide 1 meter information for public and 1 centimeter for military. Then our neighbor China has Bidu, right? Uh, two separate satellite constellation. Then again, uh, Bidu being the review, uh, regional navigation satellite system. Now, China is expanding to make it a global positioning system in a true sense. Keeping a target of 35 satellites is uh, there. 20 are now in the orbit. 15 more China is adding to make it a GPS. So, that is again for 10 centimeter, 10 meter for public and 10 centimeter for military. India INSS, NABIC and uh, 7 satellite system and uh, entire landmass 15 kilometer from Indian landmass. First satellite launch was in 2013 and 20 meter for civilians and 10 meter for military right this is how the navic looks like navigation with indian constellation we have completed the launch of all the satellite initially two satellites uh, their atomic clock were faulty so we added two more satellite to the constellation so total becomes seven so though although we launched two extra so but actual constellation which work is seven right uh, and uh, accuracy is uh, uh, timing can be provided through three extremely accurate rubidium atomic clock in each of the satellite, right? So it can provide services to normal civilian, standard position services, and for military that can be restricted position services or precision position system that can be given. So four in geosynchronous orbit, three in geostationary. What you can see that four satellite almost look like a letter number eight and three are geostationary right so this is what the navic is all about and navic can uh, provide application for uh, disaster management vehicle tracking fleet management precise timing 
mapping and geodetic data capture terrestrial navigation aid for hikers and travelers right visual and voice navigation for drivers all this can be done through the navic up to red sea we can have coverage what you can see in the photograph then coming to gagan gagan is basically a system of three communication satellites gsat 8 gsat 10 and gsat 15 right gsat 8 gsat 10 gsat 15 that makes the communication satellite system what is called gagan gps aided geo augmented navigation satellite system right and this uh, gagan system uh, it provides signal in the space you have three gsat satellite satellite which have been placed in geostationary orbit so it takes the signal in space from the gps satellite of usa and give it to the pilot the pilot who fly the airplane and also augment better signaling from the ground air traffic management from the ground level what you see in the image here right this image is a very important uh, depiction on that then coming to here a uh, very important one gemini very important application of uh, this uh, gagan system gagan has been developed jointly by isro and airports authority of india but now for a fisherman the gemini has been developed gemini is a just like a soap box ka size a device which can be fitted into fishing boat with a receiver there and can uh, it is being now services of a potential fishing zone or ocean state forecast weather or any kind of a tide high storm or cyclone that is being done through incois indian national center for oceanic information services which is a organization located in hyderabad under the ministry of earth sciences so incois is providing all the parameters and they generate forecast in on daily basis on the weather disaster warning for cyclones and tsunamis even tsunami also there and also potential fishing zone daily basis the information can be given to the fishermen then coming to forecast is transmitted through gemini device the gps receiver is there right uh, and it works with the help of gagan three communication satellite it works on that so that is where the gemini has been developed and uh, it can give 3 days in advance right gemini can provide 3 days in advance the alert to the fishermen and these are sent once every hour right very very important application uh, of the navigation system what india has developed right uh, launch vehicles you know that india has got uh, following launch vehicles right initially we had historical experimental one that is slb3 aslb satellite launch vehicle and augmented satellite launch vehicle then we developed pslb polar satellite launch vehicles then gslb mark 2 and now we have gslb mark 3 very heavy communications uh, heavy rocket there 640 tons even we use gslb mark 3 for chandrayaan 2 mission right which has two heavy boosters with liquid core on core core engine and upper third stage cryogenic engine c25 that is a indigenous cryogenic engine with liquid hydrogen oxygen was developed right what you see in the image here so falcon 9 now you know the space x that is space x elon musk right so they have developed a very important rocket what is called rlb reusable launch vehicle psl gslb is r ELV expendable launch vehicle. Once they are used, that is done. But what is RLV? RLV go to the outer space and come back. Reusable launch vehicle go to the space and then return back. Right. There are only three countries in the world which has got right now RLV technology. That is the USA, NASA, Russia, Roscosmos, and third is China, CNS. Now fourth country will be India. we are already working on that but private company if we take private space company then spacex has developed falcon 9 heavy which can go to the outer space and come back initial launch was a failure but again uh, it was developed and it was successfully launched right that is where you have the photograph there it can be asked in the exam it can be a question in the exam 
now this is the design of the isro rlv right and why we are developing reusable launch vehicle we are developing to have low cost access to the outer space today india is a 2% of the space market right and we want to expand on that uh, international space market we are launching foreign satellite which i have already discussed in the classroom now we want to get more share of the international space market we want to launch more number of foreign satellites but now the cost is very heavy because pslb gslb once we use it it is uh, over we cannot recover back so rlb can be a game changer where we can launch the satellite return it back again prepare for the next launch our cost of the mission will reduce by 1/10th plus rlb will also help india carry out human space flight where we can send indian astronaut to the outer space bring them back just like a space shuttle of nasa going to the space coming back right so first we are going to accomplish gaganyaan mission unfortunately because of the pandemic uh, we had earlier planned the gaganyaan mission we will complete before 2022 but because of the covid 19 pandemic the mission has been delayed right now it will not be possible in 2022 you all know 2022 was taken the time because 75 years of india's independence but because of this current pandemic it has now been got delayed right so gaganyaan mission india's first space flight where human space flight through a module crew module and service module the launching will be done with gslb mark 3 the launch will be done by gslb mark 3 and then later on we'll build our own kind of a desi shuttle what is called rlb now what you see in the photograph this is a experimental design which was tested by isro what is called as rlv td technology demonstrator and this was in the year 2016 2016 isro conducted rlb td reusable launch vehicle technology demonstration what you see in the diagram here so what we did was that we use a kind of a dummy kind of thing we took it there with the help of booster hydrogen soil based booster and then the booster was dropped to the ocean we recovered the booster and then that air airplane also came down splashed on the water water there when we will build the actual rlv then this rlv will have re enter and will land on the runway just like aircraft now what you see right now in the diagram this is space shuttle of usa nasa space shuttle nasa built five space shuttles atlantis discovery endeavour challenger columbia challenger and columbia are lost in accidents columbia accident took place during reentry coming back to earth where kalpana chawla indian astronaut indian based indian origin astronaut of nasa and the entire crew member died during that reentry ex- accident whereas the challenger burst into flame and exploded during the lift off this three one atlantis discovery and endeavour now nasa has retired this space shuttle program this three space shuttle has have been kept in the museums in the us where the people can come and can see the space shuttle this is how it looks like it used the boosters the booster like a rocket to take it to the outer space and then this aircraft this like a jet craft remains in the outer space go to international space station and then it re enter comes back to the earth and then fly like a jet craft and land on the runway right this is what we have there then coming to this one this was uh, india's experiment in 2016 where we used this rlb td reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrator where uh, this rocket on the kind of a booster small booster it was taken the booster was fallen then the aircraft winged aircraft it came back we will uh, uh, slowly develop the technology right and india will become the fourth country in the world after us russia and china right now this was the mission profile what i discussed right now it just went into the outer space and then got back space back right so what you see right now this is how the um, it went back right it came down right what you can see right now 
is spliced back to the scene also. This was just a dummy model which we tested. I told in the class that uh, the real uh, objective of developing RLB is to capture more share of international space market. If today a normal rocket cost 5000 uh, US dollar to put uh, per kilogram, 1 kilogram of the satellite. Imagine if you have 2000 kilogram satellite, 2000 into 5000 US dollar, that is the cost. Now that will come into 500 dollars with the RLB. With the RLB, the cost will be one tenth, 500 dollars per kilogram of the satellite. And today we are spending around 300 crores for the satellite launches in a year. So again that will be economy and the economic benefit what India can have with the development of RLB technology. Right? So this is what I wanted to convey in the classroom that is what uh, and if you take the manned mission there, the Vostok 1 mission that is USSR 1961 where Yuri Gagarin went to the outer space, first man to go to the space. Same year. Mercury mission of USA, Alan Shepard became first American to go to outer space. Then China did in 2003 with the first Chinese citizen Yang Levy going there, Sanjiao mission. And then India stays with space, Rakesh Sharma, what you see in photograph, IA pilot, squadron leader. He went with Russia's uh, Soyuz T-11 on 2nd April 1984. Right, where at that time uh, Indian Prime Minister Sri uh, Srimati Indira Gandhi asked her how India looks from there. So he replied, Sare jahan se achha, Hindustan hamara, right? Now we are uh, planning for uh, Gaganyan mission. He asked the government that we must take the Gaganyan mission. Kalpana Chawla who died in the Columbia accident, Indian based uh, astronaut. Now what you see right now, this is the uh, initial design of uh, Mark 3. Initial design of Mark 3 rocket, GSLE Mark 3. In 2014, when ISRO started developing GSLV Mark III with two solid heavy booster with liquid core on engine, core engine and third stage with the indigenous cryogenic engine. At that time we gave the name LVM3X. What was the name given? LVM3X. And there we carried out a mission called CARE. What does the CARE stands for? Crew Atmospheric Re-Entry Experiment. What does the CARE stands for? C for crew, A for atmospheric. R for re-entry, E for experiment. There a crew module was dummy empty crew module was kept on the top of the rocket, right? not any satellite and this LVM3X rocket took that crew module launched into the low earth orbit and then the crew module was successfully brought back to the earth. Now this is the inspiration behind Gaganyan mission. Now this LVM3X rocket is now GSLV Mark 3. We are going to use GSLV Mark 3. And in Gaganyan mission, the crew module will have three Indian astronaut, right? Three Indian astronauts will be from Indian Air Force. They are being trained there and we are partnering with Russia and France in terms of this Gaganyan mission. Now this will be there. In Gaganyan mission, this entire uh, flight, you can see that. We will use Mark 3, GSR Mark 3. It will 16 minutes to reach to the low earth orbit, where this orbit module, the crew module with the service module will be uh, launched, just like a satellite. And this crew module with the service module will remain in the low earth orbit 300 to 400 kilometers for 5 to 7 days. And then it will reorient, deboost, the service module will get separated. It will just go back come back to the earth uh, and again the service module which will be separated and then this crew module will return back and just like a parachute, the parachute this crew module that box will be dropped into the ocean in the Arabian sea side of the coast of Gujarat. Return will take 36 minutes, <coughs> right? So this where uh, even ISRO did the testing with the pad about test. Pad <coughs> about test. What is pad about test? If during the mission, initially when the rocket will be launched, if there is any kind of problem, then they can, you know, abort the mission by pad about mission. ISRO also developed half uh, humanoid robot called Vyom Mitra. 
to you know help the three indian astronauts there so this is the mission profile what you can see that right now we have postponed the program and total cost is uh, 10000 crores right this is what the crew module 3 astronaut will be there and the service module will be there what benefits india will have with this particular program it will enhance science and technology level of the country right india will become the uh, one of the top countries in the world in field of uh, space science and technology multiple institutions are partnering with gaganyaan mission so it is a national project with lot of industries and academia industrial growth will also be enhanced through the gaganyaan mission because the number of component number of parts which will be made with the help of industries it will also generate employment right it will inspire the youth to take some such challenging task in space technology to become astronaut and all and technology will be tested in the microgravity when this astronauts will go to the outer space they will do the testing in the microgravity and those are uh, technological product which will be tested they can be used for humanities it can be used for humanities purpose there what humanity purpose can be there that it can be used for um, you know um, any kind of societal development then uh, human resource development training logistic all those kind of areas and then with the successful right now mission of gaganyaan this such kind of missions can be collaborated with international partners like presently for gaganyaan mission we are partnering with uh, france and russia so that can again enhance international collaboration in future now coming to chandrayaan mission one mission 2008 we used pslv rocket to launch uh, chandrayaan one mission and it was just simply orbiter mission it carried the 11 payload instrument from various countries including india now uh, you know chandrayaan 2 where we used the gslv mark 3 2019 so we had an orbiter which is still working there now only the problem was with the lander rover vikram lander which was having the pragyan rover we was our mission was to go to the dark side of the moon that region of the moon which remain hidden from the sun and there is a possibility that water can be found so that uh, we failed in the landing part of it you all know that this uh, vikram lander with pragyan rover crash landed on the site there so main scientific objective of chandrayaan 2 was no, for is or again orbiter is working there so collecting the data that is a mapping moon's mineral and polar region dark side of the moon confirm evidence of water ice study top soil and the atmosphere but then since we were not able to launch there uh, the land there on the dark side of the moon chandrayaan 1 on the other hand what you see here it carried one instrument called mip can you see that man moon impact probe moon impact probe just like a cap right on the top of the chandrayaan 1 so chandrayaan 1 mission we dropped crash dropped this mip and during its descent to the moon surface it detected the presence of water in the moon's atmosphere so again we are looking for the water in chandrayaan 2 mission program right so its orbiter is still working and collecting all the data and chandrayaan 2 orbiter has the this payload this instruments are there this is what you can see chandrayaan 2 large area soft x ray spectrometer class and solar solar x ray monitor xsm for mapping of major elements like magnesium aluminum silicon right then uh, uh, calcium iron and all air and s band synthetic aperture radar to probe few first few meters of lunar surface right uh, to get give evidence of uh, presence of water ice uh, on the moon the imaging infrared spectrometer to image the lunar surface in spectral range of 0.8 to 5 micrometer again to find out investigate minerals signature of water and hydrosol molecules terrain cam mapping camera tmc2 to prepare complete three dimensional map of the lunar surface in the spectral range of 0.5 to 0.85 micrometer and then neutral mask spectrometer right to measure the neutral composition of the tenuous lunar atmosphere in 1 to 300 you know atomic mass unit range these are the instruments which uh, chandrayaan 2 orbiter is right now carrying there with the mission part then mangalyaan you all know that mars orbiter mission we launched in 2013 with the pslv c25 and in on 24 september 24 september 2014 mangalyaan 
Mars Orbiter mission reached the planet Mars. You have seen the very popular movie Akshay Kumar, Vidya Balan, Mission Mangal, right? So we used PSLV C25, and then we used the transfer orbit, Earth orbit, geocentric, then Sun's orbit, heliocentric orbit, and then finally to the Mars orbit by providing thrust to the satellite. So that is what the low low cost uh, uh, budget uh, this uh, mission was carried, and India is the first country in the world to be very successful in first attempt with very low cost budget to insert an orbiter into the Mars orbit. Even NASA of the USA failed in its first attempt, right? But India did in one go. Which are other countries? So ESA has got the Mars orbiter. NASA has got Maven. Japan has got Nozomi, and Russia, China has got Phobos Grant. India is the fourth country in the world to have kind of independent kind of a such orbiter mission there, and we did it in a very low cost, 74 million US dollar. And successfully in first attempt, right? Now these are the instruments of Mangalyaan. These are the instruments of Mangalyaan, by right? Lyman Alpha Photometer, to find out water, methane sensor for Mars, to locate the methane if we can find the presence of methane gas. Then Menka for exotmosphere atmospheric composition of Mars. Then Mars color camera for mapping of the surface and the mineral investigation. The thermal infrared imaging spectrometer again the study of uh, uh, high heat or thermal events in the Mars, right, on the red planet. Now I am coming to two uh, important missions of uh, ISRO, AstroSat, India's first astronomical satellite. That like three wavelengths: visible light, optical, X-ray, and ultraviolet region. You can say it is a mini Hubble. It is called mini Hubble of India, right? And 2015 it was launched, and 2016 prelims exam there is a question on astrosat. It carries five instruments. There are two telescopes also: large area X-ray proportional counter, soft X-ray telescope, cadmium zinc telluride imager, scanning sky monitor, and ultraviolet imaging telescope. And uh, the mission objective, right, are this one. Here is the collaboration with DAE Department of Atomic Energy. It's a astronomical satellite of India. And India is not the only country in the world. U.S. has got ESA, European Space Agency has got, Japan has also has got such kind of satellite there. Now, what are the objectives here? Uh, Multi-wavelength monitoring of uh, uh, broad range of cosmic sources, monitoring of X-ray in the sky for new transient, survey the uh, sky for hard X-ray and UV bands, then uh, study the galaxies, the formation of star, gas and dust, nebula and all this. Binary star system with uh, neutron star and black holes, right? All these are the uh, missions of the AstroSat. And for the last uh, more than five years, AstroSat is working properly, right? So we have number of uh, observatories in India, like you have uh, uh, telescopes, ground-based telescope, right? Uh, so this also made in the headlines that apart from this having astronomical satellite, India also has ground-based observatories. Ground-based telescope, like one is a uh, Nainital, and you know, Nainital there in uh, Uttarakhand, Aries, right? Then we have in Guru Shikhar, Mount Abu, right? There we have PRL has this one. Then uh, we have uh, uh, Himalayan Chandra X telescope. Then Henle, Henle in Ladakh, right? Then we recently Growth India telescope was there. That is a robotic telescope which can be uh, operated uh, by robotic ways. From Bangalore, from Karnataka, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, without going to the Ladakh, can operate the telescope. That is called Growth India Telescope. High altitude gamma ray telescope is that. Narayan Gaon near Pune, we have GMRT, Giant Meter Wave Radio Telescope, right? And then um, Henle, we are developing again more and more. Now there was also in the news, uh, you know that first time image of a black hole was taken of M87. M87, the the star with the with the dyed as a black hole, that image was taken by Event Horizon Telescope. What is Event Horizon Telescope? Is a array of telescopes throughout the world, which collected the data and generated this first image of black hole. Right, that is Event Horizon Telescope. That was the news, and uh, it can be asked in the exam. Then again, astronomical telescopes are there. 
apart from India's satellite associate, there are many are there. Like for example, uh, James Webb Space Telescope. NASA is planning to launch JWST into Lagrange Point 2. That is the back side of the Earth, located 15 lakh kilometers. That is where the, the NASA Swift Satellite System is now under the work. Gamma Ray Burst study and all this one. Large and small magnetic clouds can be studied. Uh, gas and uh, nebula, gas and dust, supernova, exploding stars can be studied. Right? So, Swift Telescope. This again, NASA is now developing that. What do you have on the side? Astrocyte mission I have already covered in the classroom there. So, we use PSLV C30 to launch Astrocyte and um, it has been put into kind of uh, orbit, right? Uh, orbit uh, which is located 650 kilometers. There was a question in the 2016 prelims exam where it was given 1650, that is wrong. 650 kilometers in the orbit is there. And India is not the only second country after US, ESA, Japan, they also have launched. So, there the two statement question, both the statements are wrong. The 2016 prelims exam where two statements given. The first was India is second country after USA, that is wrong. ESA also has got, uh, Japan also has got, so India is not the second country. And second statement was that the uh, astrocyte is 1650 kilometers, that is wrong, 650 kilometers. So, there the answer is none, both statements are wrong. Now, coming to India's study of Sun, Aditya mission, Aditya L1 mission, right. And uh, Sun has a lot of mystery there. One mystery is the corona, outer corona of the Sun and uh, solar flares, coronal mass ejection. So, Aditya will be third big outing after Moon and the Mars and 400 kilogram sat uh, satellite which will place into L1 point. You can see there are five Lagrangian points between two kind of uh, heavenly bodies where third, third uh, object can experience net balancing force of gravity and centrifugal force. So, we are going to use a L1 point between Sun and the Earth to place a Aditya spacecraft. So, it will be 15 lakh kilometer from the Earth. So, there will be no effect of the eclipse. Eclipse happens when Moon comes between Sun and the Earth and Moon is 3 lakh 84 thousand kilometers away from the Earth. But when you talk about L1 point, it is 15 lakh kilometers. So, no impact of the eclipse on the spacecraft. Seven instruments to study Sun's corona, magnetic field of the Sun, solar wind, impact of solar wind on the space weather, right. So, 2008 it was sanctioned with a cost of 1275 crores and these are the payloads. Visible emission line chronograph, solar ultraviolet imaging telescope, solar Aditya solar wind particle experiment, plasma analyzer package for Aditya, solar low energy X-ray spectrometer, high energy L1 orbiting X-ray spectrometer advanced triaxial high resolution digital magnetometer. These are the instruments which will be on board Aditya L1. Now, I am coming to the last part NISAR, NASA ISRO synthetic aperture radar. NASA and ISRO are collaborating together with this uh, synthetic aperture radar. Like this uh, radar will be there and NASA and ISRO are coming together with this kind of a uh, radar system where uh, uh, will be earth observation satellite. It will be a Earth observation satellite, which will on the satellite there will be kind of a, a radar, radar, synthetic aperture radar, right. So, NASA and ISRO both will do the together. ISRO will provide the launch, will use GSLV Mark 2 to the launch in NASA NISA satellite and uh, the radar which will be there, synthetic aperture radar, L band will be given by NASA and S band will be provided by ISRO. Now, the joint mission program, if you see here, so here, this is the 747 kilometer circular orbit will be there and that will be on polar side, 98 degree inclination, sun synchronous polar orbit. We use, we will use GSRE Mark 2 to do the launch and with the following objectives of the NISAR project. It is going to be the first such dedicated satellite for study of environment and climate change. Now, what are the main objectives there? It will understand the dynamic uh, uh, kind of events on the earth like uh, impact on ecosystem, forest ecosystem, agriculture ecosystem, grassland ecosystem, right, because of the global warming, climate change impact, melting of glaciers, mountain glacier, polar ice, right, again it will be studied 
it will do the mapping just like a remote sensing satellite or the ocean satellite there it will also study the um, carbon capture process like you know that carbon sequestration by green plants with the help of photosynthesis so how much carbon capture can be done of co2 gas by the green plants and all phytoplankton green plants forest grassland river lake oceans again this satellite will do the monitoring of that again this satellite has another very important aspect it can also take the capture by the agriculture land forest land grassland various ecosystem wetlands like peatland peatland which is a type of wetland there and again determine the likelihood of earthquake disaster management earthquake landslide forest fire which can take place again it can get all the mapping of that and can give the prior warning also there so it's a very very important aspect and uh, you could expect questions in the exam right you could expect questions on nisar right unknown areas i always keep on saying that you could always get the question from unknown area right unknown areas uh, questions can be asked in the exam you have to always focus from current aspect from isro point of view which are the areas where upsc has so far not touched upon not i have not asked the question what i discussed through the powerpoint here this powerpoint will be given to you this presentation you can have i'll give you the powerpoint of that that you can follow with that right there is no problem with that you can take the powerpoint you can use that one but what i am want to make you understand go to such gray areas unknown areas right like i said gagan no question has been asked gemini apple gagan no question bhuvan no question has been asked nisar no question aditya l1 no question has been asked right these are the areas right where possibly upsc can ask question gaganyaan human space flight gsle mark 3 chandrayaan 2 navik or irnesses has already been asked in the exam right already two three times upsc has asked the question now it cannot be repeated again there is no competition on that but other areas where upsc has not asked question there you could expect questions all right so what i am going to do here uh, i am going to like uh, stop the class here whatever i explained through the powerpoint everything um uh, in terms of the mission and all next class what i'll do i will take certain multiple choice questions i'll discuss mcqs right whatever we have discussed uh, today in the classroom we'll take up mcqs multiple choice questions so just to give you practice understanding how upsc can ask questions right at the same time we'll also see i have already discussed the latest satellites of isr and all we have done that we'll see some kind of uh, important astronomical aspect from global perspective nasa esa all those global russia china and all japan and all global perspective we'll discuss in the class and that global perspective again you could expect question indian perspective i have discussed about isro and all but global perspective and particularly from the astronomical aspect you could get question there so we'll do two th things in the next class first we'll uh, discuss revise whatever we have learnt in today's class with the help of multiple choice questions and second thing what we are going to do we are going to cover right uh, global perspective of astronomy astrophysics or space science and technology right it can cover nasa esa russia whichever areas are there and then other miscellaneous topics on space science and technology what we have not covered today i hope this will help you out right and uh, you you are getting to understand which are the gray areas which are the unknown areas where questions can be asked so that you can give more focus to those topics all right so we'll continue with it don't worry uh, i am there and i am going to teach all such topics what i have written on the green board before that since today we have started the first class with the space technology but then as we roll out we'll keep on going through one by one and we'll cover lot of areas there 
and again i am telling you that whatever i am covering in the classroom whichever gray areas whichever unknown areas whichever important topics i am highlighting please read it there will be questions from there right you could get questions from there right so i'm trying to help you out to give you such highlight of the topics which you can understand and you can read more on that and be prepared with the from the question point of view in the upsc exam right i hope uh, you understand all this and uh, we will continue our discussion in the next class so thank you everyone the learning will continue there in the next class and we are going to cover a lot of new topics new areas right so abhi picture baki hai dost <laughs> we have to go across lot of new topics new new areas all right